Hello there. My name's Mayuko and welcome to Crash Course, the show where two fearless developers explain software engineering concepts, ideas, and trends using only what they can find in this room. No pens, paper, whiteboards, or screens of any kind are allowed. Our developers today are Noel and Imtiaz, and they'll be explaining bot frameworks. Define it and combine it with machine learning to predict the end user's actions and show us how that works. How are you two feeling? Feeling great. Very good. good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I'll start with the cloud and then we'll yeah. work our way. And I'll get the bots. The channels. Perfect. Awesome. Oh my gosh, so many bots, so little time. In here, we'll have various services. Very colorful. So what are those things? So these are all of our channels. Basically, when you build a bot, we always like to start with the customer. So these all represent different ways that someone might engage. And it's really infinite. And those are the different interfaces to this machine learning infrastructure that we have here. Right? That's right. We have this concept of democratized AI. So when you build this big bot, Ooh. it has all of these services, computer vision and speech to text, text to speech, text translation, the ability to communicate to Microsoft Graph or location-based services for maps, all these what we call web services. So let's go over an example. If we were to have Skype or some uh, channel like Facebook Messenger, Messenger, it's calling one of the bots, which is essentially a service. So let's say it sends the service to this guy. And so through this, we're able to communicate with the... That's right. All of this, the models that are involved, the back-end business logic, all would sit here. And the benefit to that is that you want one place. Otherwise, you'd be building all this disparate code. And as a company, I'd have to manage all of that. The models that these bots are going to be interacting with are in the cloud, right? Yep. So it's yep. safe to say that I can move this yes, boundary. Yes, we can expand the boundary. Everything minus the customer. But only what's exposed to the customer are just the bots. That's right. Yep. When you're a client or a customer talking to a bot, and just having right. alone the ability for you to communicate is going to be like a service. I was looking for a speaker. Oh, yes, nice. This is like old school, circa 19 something. <laughs> But right, you'd have one of these bots will use speech to text, and this bot, all it's doing is passing those requests through. So now we've got speech to text, text to speech, which is represented by our speaker. But what happens with translation? We can translate in up to, you know, 60 languages. Oh my gosh, like now. That looks like a lot of languages. Yes. Once you hit this service, it's gonna do what's called language detection. Then it's going to determine whether or not it can speak that language. As a person developing a bot, I wanna speak in the language of my customer. So this bot is able to understand all of the all different of channels, images, text, speech, what have you. Yep. And these models are, for the most part, pretty much already trained. You can train them further for your specific domain by right. adding more data, but for the most part, they're pretty knowledgeable. That's right. So when you build a bot for the first time, often people are like, how do I know what to build? And so they usually will have... You want to use this duck? Yes, let's use a duck. So they'll have a customer who's super squeaky. I want this feature. And we'd have the customer talk to this fancy bot guy, which would represent us bot builders. This customer's <laughs> gonna say things that us as a dev would never have thought about. So we capture that dialogue and that infuses this to happen. One of the reasons we do it is just to create all the different levels of accessibility. This one may be supporting speech, another supporting text. There are people who can't use a typical keyboard and mouse or even a smartphone. So how do we create massive value for our customers by changing how they interact with us? So a question that is coming up in my mind is as a developer and as a customer, how do I trust that this data is good and safe? So and that's been a big concern for a lot of uh, cloud infrastructures mm -hmm. and they prioritize security. So you can't really just willy-nilly access the cloud without any predefined authentication rules. Mm -hmm. So your apps are gonna have the access to the keys and then someone that doesn't have access to the key will not be able to access any of these services. Got it. I've certainly learned a lot about bot frameworks today from you two, so the more you know. And thank you so much for this awesome display of bot frameworks and being on the show, Noel and Imtiaz. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Crash Course. Maybe this bot? Oh, sorry, little guy. No, um, no problem. <laughs> bots can fix themselves. Fix. So, <laughs> <the frame> bots. <laughs>